Hi everyone and welcome back to Halley Handro HD and today I thought I would talk about Comey Can't Communicate. I'd um, done a reaction to the Netflix uh, trailer that was coming out and uh, that was a few months ago and I posted it on the channel and I've since watched it. I've uh, got the, the manga and so on but I haven't quite got to grips with every single you know release but I'm fairly sure about what it's about so I thought I would uh, take a take a dive into uh, give my own thoughts about it. Um, what I really liked about Comey Can't Communicate was the, the subtlety of showing us that anxiety is a real thing, is a real problem for some people. Some people cannot speak to people in a certain way and uh, Comey explains the most extreme example you know, of, of not being able to communicate with their classmates and just being a really, really closed off individual. And from the series, we get the every single, every single episode has the the line like social anxiety, people, when people have this, they can't communicate with people. And a lot of people, I've, I've read a few different critiques about this, watched a few videos. Some people have, have ne sort of reacted negatively to that, like this a bit re like repetitious. We know that Kobe can't communicate. That's a part of the show. But I actually really, I really like that because a lot of people probably would get not annoyed, but maybe frustrated with the fact. That, okay, yeah, we know that she can't talk. Why can't you know? Like why can't she just spark up a conversation with somebody that would resolve a lot of different problems that she experiences in the show but when we get reminded every single time she cannot communicate she cannot communicate that's a real thing so i really like that that was one of my one of my really you know one of the first things that really gripped me about this this show was like the creators are really wanting to push it put it across that this is a real problem. Anxiety and social interactions are a real problem for Comey. Uh, secondly, I want to talk about Tadano. Tadano is the quintessential um, anime character. Oh, I'm just a young high school guy. I just want to live my life and not get in trouble and not be the main person. Like, I mean, it's a trope. It's a trope that is done so many times and you're just like come on you know how can you make this original but in all fairness to the people that created this show they ha or the, the manga that turned into the show they absolutely have they've nailed Tadano in such a way that he almost feels like an original character which like I hate I hate it when anime does this I really do I don't know what everyone else thinks but my god, oh, I'm just a young high school guy and I have no motivation or ambitions. I just want to be a normal guy. Do, 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 do. And then something big, massive thing happens and then he turns into this, you know what I mean? Future diary sort of situation where, you know, like he's a young, normal guy. He doesn't want to blend in with the crowd or whatever and then he turns out to be a superhero. But Tadano is such, like, I don't know why Tadano just separates himself from the mold. I think it's just the quirkiness of his character, the fact that he can relate and talk to anyone around him, even though he's supposed to be the one who isn't like that. And I think there's a lot of a lot of cool things in the show that shows that Tadano is probably the normal one out of the bunch of absolute freaks that go to this high school. I mean, I mean they say it themselves that like every character in this in this anime has has something wrong with them. <laughs> you know, Najimi is is the perfect example. Of, like, like, you know, there's a she him situation, and they them whatever. Like, has like, you, know, you have no idea what that person is going to do next. Every single episode, something brand new, something crazy, something off the radar. And then you've got the main, the other girl, the one that doesn't have the glasses with the sort of brown hair. Can't remember her name. Na Nami, I think her name is. I'm completely obsessed with Komi, the girl with the glasses who thinks she's a dog. I don't know. This this anime is completely ridiculous. It's so far out there that it's what makes it good. Um, so I'm just going to go through my notes. 
and see what I want to talk about. Yeah, so I've talked about real anxiety, to, uh, anxiety, uh, real insight to anxiety. Sorry, Tadano, Tadano has some amazing, amazing character development. Um, from from what we've seen so far, I think there's going to be a season two. Or there's got to be a season two. Can't just leave it as it is. But from how we see originally, from like you know, Tadano being this quiet, introverted guy who just wants to get through it and then get out. And then meeting Comey, who's even more introverted and quiet than him, and then it sort of awakens him to try and break her out of her shell to make pals. And then from that, going through it and talking and then bringing all these people together just so that he can show her that the world isn't as bad as Comey thinks it is, and so on. I love that. I love that. So much good development with Tadano. Props on that. Uh, what else have I wrote here? You know the concept, the complete like the concept of making friends as well. So like, Comey's Comey's sort of main goal is to come out of her shell so she can talk to people, so she can make friends, so she can be happy. And Didano obviously becomes this enabler for her. Like he wants to he wants to just push her to be best person that she can like let's let's get you involved with all these people let's get you friends and like that's one thing i really like about the show like how we are as teenage when we were teenagers how we we're at school like it's an extremely simple concept the kids in the school in this anime are completely mental and they're all put into the school because they've got all these like freaky talents and they're just like eccentric and so on but because of that we see that there are actually just normal normal kids as well who go through the same things that normal other kids do and Tadano tries to show that side of them to Komi and Komi is able to sort of come out of her shell and to learn about how these kids work so she can try and become friends with them and at the same time we see how Komi is re revered as some sort of like goddess to all the students all the students love her and she doesn't like she doesn't have she's completely oblivious as to this situation like komi is the goddess we love komi she is the perfect school person and we see how komi doesn't really understand that i always thought that was a really really interesting trope as well um so that's one thing i put there and like how we also see how Komi is versus like Tadano, like how people see her, like everyone sees Tadano as the enemy because Tadano is the only one who is close to Komi who can communicate with her, pun intended, and how everyone is jealous of Tadano because he has this privilege, but Tadano doesn't really want the privilege, he just wants to you know, he, he doesn't really, in the beginning he doesn't really have that thought, but then obviously over time he starts developing feelings for her and, you know, we might see something develop in the second season or you know, or whatever happens, happens with Komi and Tadano, but I'm kind of leaning on the sort of, I'd rather see them just as remain friends and just as Tadano fulfilling his goal, I don't, like, I mean I get I get the romantic entail and I, I get like how you know, certain episodes, like, they come too close to each other and all that sort of stuff. And I completely understand why Comey... I mean, it would almost make sense, from a slice of life romance part of you, that Comey and Tadano become part... Become in a relationship. And I, would, I wouldn't I would I wouldn't be against that. I really wouldn't. I would see that as, as a sort of... Win, obviously, a win for Tadano and a win for the show. And a lot of people would probably be very happy with with them being together, but at the same time, I would also like to see some originality. I'd like to see Tadano just getting to his goal, getting her to make a hundred pals, her to turn around, completely come out of her shell and say thanks very much. I'm away. See you later. And then they just split away from their like their goals. He goes to do one thing, she goes to do the other. That's honestly what I think would be. I don't know if that would be better, but I don't know. I just think that would be like the ultimate goal. I, I don't want to see it in a romantic sense. I mean, I know it probably will end up like that. And if it does end up like that, not entirely too upset about it because 
No, it is what it is. But, yeah, that's just what I thought. Uh, I'm enjoying it. And um, I love all the side characters, all the crazy people in it. And I'm just really looking forward to season two. I think it's going to be amazing. I'm all here for it. Um, and, yeah, I think I'll give this, the first season, uh, a solid 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. Anyway, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that one. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.